Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about what exactly is meant by a digital media product. I've often been frustrated by looking at different resources, textbooks, articles about digital media products which don't really bother to actually define what they are, which isn't very helpful for learning. So I figure because all of the next videos in this playlist are going to build on just the concept of digital media products, it's worthwhile defining what they are. So, it's quite a short definition to be fair. Digital media products are a blend of both technology and content. So as someone who is going to be creating digital media products, you need to be thinking about both what technology you can utilize and how that is going to be most effective at communicating your content. Certain jobs will think about just technology, right? If you are say a software engineer or a actual systems engineer, you're thinking only about technology and all the gritty details. If you are purely in a totally creative industry, maybe if you are a writer, you might only be thinking about content, but here we are in slightly a unique situation where you have to think about both. And really, digital media is contrasting with what we might consider to be old or traditional media, which I've put in quotes because it's often used as slightly a disparaging term about old media, and you hear sort of various politicised terms like mainstream media and new media. And a lot of these terms are not particularly helpful, I think. so. It's not that important, but I do think we need to talk about what exactly is meant by the term media. Again, it's often not defined. So media is a plural word, first of all, and media refers to just different ways of delivering information. So all the different ways we are able to convey information to someone else. And the singular version of media is medium, by the way. So to give some examples of how digital media, or so you might, in this course at least, see it referred to as iMedia, how that contrasts with I was going to say old-fashioned, again, it, that's not a bad thing, right? Because books are clearly nothing wrong with books, but we might now be able to utilise more digital solutions like ebooks. And the word digital in digital media refers to the fact that you can store it on a computer, effectively in a computer readable format, which is in binary, which is just zeros and ones. Another example, a newspaper is all perfectly fine, but it's quite a traditional way of conveying a message, whereas nowadays, most major newspaper companies have different apps. There are different, you know, you, you have more opportunities potentially on an app to show information in more creative ways. Often you get live updates, you might have fancier graphs, you might be able to embed videos within articles, which obviously you can't do on a, a paper-based newspaper, so you have more options. And traditional static billboards or hoardings, as we are meant to call them in the UK, are perfectly fine, but of course we now see actual LED sometimes screens on big billboards or also on smaller ones, maybe on bus stops, which have may potentially additional functionality like touch screens and allow you to, as an advertiser, perhaps flick between different adverts and maximize the reach. Also be a bit more creative here in this bus stop, we've got some kind of game which might hook people in more than just a static poster on the side of a bus stop. So there are loads of examples of digital media products. It's such a generic term really, but just a few more maybe more innovative examples. Here is something we've started to see in a few TV series and a few films, online films at least, interactive storylines. This is a, a screen grab from Black Mirror on Netflix and allows you as a user to pick different storylines based on different options, which is allowing the user more choice. As a director, as a writer, it gives you more creative possibilities, but it's not something you could have done on an old TV set from 20 years ago. Virtual reality, has been around for a little while now and it's not really gone mainstream, but perhaps it will, where you have a headset and you can move through and interact with this virtual world. It allows you to be totally creative because you can just rewrite things. This is a podcast studio, which in comparison is less exciting, but definitely in the last few years, podcasts have blew up. It seems like every celebrity has got a podcast, which could be a bad thing, but it at least shows how popular the medium is. This is an example of a museum which has an interactive exhibit. This is not the greatest picture because it just looks like just projectors on walls, but it adds an extra dynamic to the room. Maybe these kids would be more engaged having a moving spaceship, um, a moving spacecraft on the, on the wall than just a picture. And if you've been to good art museums or good science museums which have even fancier exhibits, not all of it will involve technology, but a fair amount of it will, and it gives you lots more possibilities to hook in the people visiting. And a similar technology to virtual reality is augmented reality, which is where instead of having a, a whole new world you are immersed in, it just adds on to your real world. So again, it's not massively gone mainstream, it's only been around for a few years now, um, but different companies can use it in 
way specific to their needs. So I believe IKEA uses it to show furniture how it might look in your house. I think certain opticians like Specsavers maybe allow you on an app to add glasses to your face so you can try on glasses but virtually. So now hopefully you have an idea of what is meant by a digital media product. Really anything which uses technology to convey some message. We can talk about what is really a three step process to actually create digital media. The first of these stages is what we call pre-production, which is what this unit is called, what all my videos in the future are gonna focus on, because that's what's gonna be covered in the exam, but you'll also be doing production and post-production as well. In pre-production is where you are doing the planning and maybe some designing of a media product, which will be based on the client requirements. We'll talk more about that in the next video, but then in production, you're actually going to put those plans and designs into action and actually create the media product based on those plans. And then post-production is where you are gonna make any final changes before the product will be delivered back to the client. So what actually happens in these stages is quite specific to the actual media products you are making. Maybe in pre-production you are writing the script or editing the script. If you are making say an advert or a film, you might be doing some sketching out of ideas, maybe with a mind map. You might be having meetings with your client, maybe they are pitching to you if you are successful or you are pitching to them your ideas maybe even you have to pitch to investors to try and get some money to fund the production and then in production where you actually are making the product you might be filming your advert or filming your digital skit and actually doing all of that recording recording a podcast or you might be say if it's digital art you actually are using graphic designing software to actually draw the art and then in post again really depends on what exactly you are doing if it's a video perhaps you are editing it maybe you are going through the sound and dubbing in sound effects. Maybe you are re-recording any sound which wasn't high quality enough. Maybe if it's some digital art, maybe a poster, you've got the actual artwork and now you're going to superimpose the actual text on it, coming from the client maybe. And just before we end, on a quick point about film and TV. So even though the actual art of say filmmaking might seem not old fashioned, um, but not very digital, of course how we apply it can be.